Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. All of our guests today sponsored by Basson Motors. That includes Ian McIntyre standing by. Check out their Canada Day sale all July long. Get $3,000 for scrap car trade-ins. Pay no GST and get a TV with every new financed vehicle. Learn more at BASANTMotors.com. Tanbeer, Delaney's OK Tire and Langley uh, inbox, Rick. You guys are so impatient, and so is uh, spelt with several O's. So he means really impatient. Uh, Rick is bang on. I thought you'd be included in you guys, but That's I guess a first. not. Canucks don't play their first game till October. You yeah. guys just want all the trades and signings to be done before you go on vacation. Ah. Tanbeer's bang on. That's Absolutely. True. That's true. Jim, Patrick, if you're listening out there, it's all about Donnie and Dolly. Yeah. Hey, don't worry about, you know, your team, your franchise, Francesco, even the fan base. It's all about Donnie Dolly and Ian McIntyre, who joins us now from uh, sportsnet.ca. How are you, sir? Good. I, I don't know if it's good for me to be associated with you guys with some of the mail you get. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You are on the air with us right now. Keep that in mind. You're also, are you you're out at UBC at the development camp? I am. As a matter of fact, I am standing inside a cold arena, which is kind yeah. of nice for a change. Mm-hmm. And I was going to step outside to do this call, but I thought you might like some uh, authentic hockey sound B-roll yeah. in mm-hmm. the background. But you're not getting any right now. No. Because somebody's just talking to the group. But oh, there will okay. be pucks and the, gla- the, the sound huh. of the glass. Have you noticed nothing sounds like that on Earth? Yeah. Like, you, you, can't, you can't replicate. Even Hollywood couldn't do it with no. all their technology. A puck no. hitting the glass. Oh, and it's a, it's a great sound. Uh, the, we, we, all of us here in Canada lo- love that. And can you set the record straight? Because I heard this discussed on 650 today. Your people, your yeah. Sportsnet uh, people. Is, <laughs> my, is, my is, is, is yeah. the development camp open to the public? No. Okay. No, okay. it is not. So, uh, at least now I have seen no official communique on that. But mm. considering that I had to be let through about three locked doors to get oh. in here, and uh, I'm looking, there's there's nobody here other than reporters and Canuck staff of mm. equal numbers. So, uh, no. Uh, sadly, at this point, not. I don't know if uh, they may add a a scrimmage at some point. Uh, but as of now, sorry, no no plans for public viewing. Sorry, Ian, I thought when you said no one is here, I thought you meant prospects. <laughs> Lots of those guys. Yeah, 30, Lots of those guys. Yeah, 32 and l- players? Luckily, yes, and luckily their names are on their backs as yeah. well. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they essentially have not quite two full lineups. I was surprised when they sent the list out because you, you, know, you, you know roughly how many contracts there are in the organization. And you think of logistics uh, that maybe some guys won't be here, but they no they've they've invited enough people that they've got pretty much uh, two squads to work with. Ian, what sold the Canucks on Jonathan Lekaramaki? I think they were just pretty excited that he was available to them at, at fifteen because they had him in their top ten. I don't know where in that top ten, but they didn't think. And every team says this, of course, whether you're picking yeah. 15th or 150th. We can't believe the guy was yes. still there. But they, they, couldn't, they couldn't believe the guy was still there. And what they really like about him is, is just his ability to shoot the puck and score goals. You know, I, I'm not going to – I hate to diminish the value of my appearance here mm-hmm. on, on, on your show. I don't pretend to know these guys, unlike a lot of people in the media who know all these guys. I don't pretend to know them, but, yeah. you know, I've done a lot of reading, and and Lekaramaki might be the best. If he's not the best pure scorer, he's one of the best pure scorers in this draft class. So they got another guy who can who can finish, and uh, Patrick Alvin uh, told us after the draft that he can do more than finish. He thinks his, his, his playmating, playmaking, Mm-hmm. is underrated and he used the comparison of Lucas Raymond in Detroit mm-hmm. who had a had a great rookie season should have been a Calder trophy finalist uh, but he thinks that uh, Lakara Mackey can be that kind of that kind of player 
And Ian, have I got this right? Uh, Lakaramaki is there at UBC along with five of the six players the Canucks drafted last week? Yeah, I haven't done the head count on the six, but Lakaramaki is here. Okay. Ian, uh, here's the million dollar question. What happens with JT Miller? Are you surprised? We've gone through one deadline, we've gone through a draft. It's not done, Ian. Like, where does this end up? Yeah, well, Rick, unfortunately, there's been about 13 deadlines for yeah. when the Canucks had to trade JT Miller. And they've all passed, and I must say, passed fairly uneventfully. If you go back to, you know, speculation about when Rutherford took over and then the initial waiting period that Rutherford outlined in his first press conference, how he'd wait until the team did that big trip to Florida in the East in January and then know more about his team, and that passed without uh anything occurring and then the trade deadline and now the draft and now i think they're going to get to free agency on wednesday without anything uh happening and you know the uh, the one thing i'll say about uh uh rutherford and albine if they they've been very consistent on this file that they don't feel uh the urge, and I'm paraphrasing here, they don't feel the urgency that a lot of us feel that they need to resolve this. Uh, all being saying recently, even, well, lots of players go into their final year yeah. of their contract before it's resolved. Now, I think for uh, numerous reasons, we all, we all in this market know that's probably not a good idea, that if, you can make, if, you can make, if you're going to have to trade them and you can make a good trade before then, then... Uh, it's probably better to do that than than you know go into the season have this hanging over hanging over everyone. But they clearly just don't feel that urgency, and they feel like they're not going to make a trade until they get the one that they like. I, I talked to Rutherford yesterday for a, a little free agency preview that uh, I think is going to get posted tomorrow on Sportsnet.ca. But one of the things he says, and this is a guy who's in the Hall of Fame, been in the business a long time. He said it's his experience that when you want to make a trade really bad, hmm. badly, he said bad, when you want to make a trade really badly, you end up making a bad trade. So they're, they're, not, they're not going to move Miller until they get what they want in return or the circumstances change for them and they feel like they just have to make a move. But Ian, I asked you, you and I were uh, texting a week ago, and I said, well, if he comes back, it's a 99-point guy at $5.2 million. That's uh, – wouldn't you not take that as well? Yeah, and, and they still have this, and uh, I would say it's faint hope because Miller is in such strong position here. You know, the, yeah. not just this season. Like, we're, everybody focuses on the 99 points, but look at the three years he's had here he's he's 12th in the nhl in score over the last three years it's not just a one season thing and then you look at all the comparables and you know hurdle and zabinajad being two of the most recent ones these guys get max eight-year deals for a lot of money yeah so he's in he's in such a strong position the canucks i think uh, honestly they they still are hoping there's some kind of way that they can make this work maybe get him on a on a slightly shorter term but i just uh, i don't see how that is possible with miller's age where the canucks are and what their cap situation is but clearly they feel like this is something that they can work on all summer and and you know as they've stated publicly into next season if they have to which is fine, Ian, but the, both Jim and Patrick have talked a lot about clearing cap space. So if you yeah. keep Miller around, how do you clear, clear cap space, especially with free agency opening Wednesday? Yeah, well, absolutely, and that that's an excellent point. And it's one of the things that, that Rutherford uh, said to me is that they, they have not been able to clear the cap space that they have hoped for. Uh, that might have led to that second comment, though, because yeah. I think – I think I mentioned, you know, moving Miller potentially opens up a lot of cap space. Although, let's be, you know, realistic as well. If if they get the trade that they want, they're going to have to pay you some of that cap space for somebody coming back in trade because they're not just looking for futures. They're looking for somebody to play on this team now. Um, but 
they they have uh, you know Rutherford admitted that they haven't been able to do what they had hoped to do in the amount of cap space that they're clearing, which is why they're going to be shopping in the bargain aisle. They're yep. they're not going to be in on big names mm-hmm. on Wednesday or beyond unless again unless something shifts like a JT Miller trade or some other kind of move that opens up a lot of money. They're going to be you know looking around the fringes and maybe. You know, their shopping is done uh, a week into free agency or or, or later. But, uh, you know, Rutherford has owned that. They they thought they could clear more cap space. They made the good deal um, to to move Travis Hamanick. They spent half of that money on the subsequent deal for Travis Dermott. So it gave them, a, you know, a little bit of breathing room, but not enough to fundamentally change things. So they've, they've got, if you look on cap friendly, which we all check every day, sometimes multiple times it it shows it connects with about two million in cap space they actually have a little bit more than that because uh, michael Furlan will be going on to ltir yep. again yep so i mean they have a, a little bit of money but you know not enough to go and sign a five or seven million dollar player there maybe they can afford a three or four million dollar player if they find the right guy but i think probably you're looking at you know, two or three or four guys at, at close to entry level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, very, very quickly, uh, Ian, and by the way, uh, the glorious hockey sounds in, in behind you. Oh, uh, tr- <laughs> Tremendous. Uh, well, very quickly, what do you believe when it comes to the Islanders and the Canucks last week? Well, uh, all the insiders say that uh, there was something cooking, mm-hmm. and uh, obviously the, the, there are reports out there that the Canucks didn't want the Islanders to – to talk to Miller's agent about yeah. what an extension would look like. Uh, I can only say what I've been told on the record by people, and, and uh, Alvin has said they, were, they weren't close to, okay. to a deal with the Islanders. And uh, I, I said to Rutherford when I talked to him, is, do, does Lou uh, Lamorello not like you? Because he kind of threw some shade at you guys, and he said, no, we're, we're old friends. So... <laughs> Uh, it, it would, I, I don't, you know, so I, I have no reason to say other than having told you what Alvin mm-hmm. has said on the record, I have no reason to doubt that there were some discussions and, uh, I think that's a bit of a strange fit, uh, from the, from my standpoint where the Islanders are with their ages and their roster situation, but hopefully there'll be some other teams come along here because it's something that connects. Uh, I think we all agree that they really need to get this resolved before next season. Ian, fabulous as always. Thanks so much, my friend. Have a great summer if we don't talk to you because we're, we're off uh, on Friday. So have a great summer. All right. Well, enjoy your, your summers in beautiful BC, and thanks for having me on. Always. Thanks, Ian. Appreciate it.